Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackboard AI. I am your host, and today we are tackling a gigantic system design challenge. You watch a video, and millions of others are too. How do they keep track without their servers melting? Let us break it down. Imagine millions of users clicking like or starting a video every second. This is a massive write load. Every time you load a page or scroll, you are reading these counts. This creates an even higher read load. Users expect to see counts update quickly, and accuracy needs to be pretty close for a good experience. So, a simple update posts, set likes equals likes, plus one command on a single giant SQL database is a recipe for disaster at this scale. That single database would lock up constantly, failing to meet user demands for speed and responsiveness. No single server can handle this massive load. Data and operations are spread across many machines using distributed systems. Caching is essential. Frequently accessed data like popular counts is served from super fast memory caches. No SQL databases or specialized counters are used as they are optimized for high volume writes and reads of simple data structures. Approximate counting or eventual consistency is often employed. Counts become correct eventually and usually very quickly across the system. When you click like, your app interface often updates immediately. This is called an optimistic update, making it feel instantaneous. An asynchronous API call is then sent to the backend. For example, post slash API slash like with the post ID. The request hits a load balancer which distributes traffic efficiently to one of many available application servers. This message queue could be a system like Kafka, RabbitMQ, or a WSSQS, among others. Message queues decouple systems. This allows the app server to respond very quickly to the user's initial action. Events are safely stored in the queue until they can be processed, and queues help handle massive spikes in traffic by buffering requests. Multiple worker services, running independently, consume these messages from the queue for actual processing. Data is likely sharded or partitioned by post ID so that writes for different posts are distributed across many database instances. Views are a bit trickier than likes. For instance, what actually counts as a view, perhaps three seconds of watch time or 30 seconds. Similar to likes, these view events typically hit an API endpoint and then go through a load balancer for distribution. These events might then go into a high throughput stream processing system, such as Apache Flink, Spark Streaming, or Kafka Streams. This layer can perform initial, fast, in-memory counting or aggregation to provide near real-time, or hot, counts for popular videos. Before permanently counting these views, systems employ robust filtering and validation processes to ensure data quality. While stream processors give fast approximate counts, often a batch processing system like Spark or MapReduce runs periodically for precise aggregation. It aggregates them accurately and stores them in a data warehouse or a persistent NoSQL database. This becomes the source of truth for view counts. Serving these validated view counts to users, which is the red path, is then largely the same process as for likes, relying heavily on caching. When a user loads a page or an app, the client requests the necessary data, including like and view counts for displayed content. The key used for this cache lookup might be something like post ID123 likes or video ID XYZ views. A cache hit, which happens very frequently for popular items, means the count is returned instantly from memory, providing a super fast response. In the case of a cache miss, the application server then fetches the count directly from the NoSQL counter database. The server then populates the cache with this retrieved count for future requests and finally returns the count to the user. The count you see might be a few seconds or even up to a minute behind the absolute true value, especially for less popular content. This slight delay is a deliberate trade-off for incredible performance and high availability at massive scale.
with counts converging very quickly. So to quickly recap, why not just use one giant SQL database? Well, update operations like count equals count plus one on popular items would create massive lock contention. Serving billions of reads for just these counts every day would completely overwhelm a traditional SQL database designed for different workloads. It is also much harder to scale traditional SQL databases horizontally for this specific kind of high volume. Simple counter workload compared to no SQL and caching tiers. This architecture relies on these specialized databases for blazing fast increments and aggressive caching for extremely rapid reads. It is all about handling the massive volume of writes asynchronously and making the even larger volume of reads incredibly fast. This combination ensures that when you hit like or watch a video, the system can absorb that massive influx of interactions and show you those ever-climbing numbers without breaking a sweat. What system design topics do you want us to cover next? Let us know in the comments below. Do not forget to like this video, subscribe to Blackboard AI, and hit that bell icon for more deep dives into complex systems. Thanks for watching.